Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melanie Chadwick or Mel Chadwick and I am going to be doing a video today where I'm going to be swatching all my Lyra aqua colours. They are water soluble wax crayons. They're very much like the Caran d'Ache Neo Colour 2 but these are slightly less expensive. I was gifted mine from my husband for my birthday so I've had them around a year now. I've had a few people ask me how do they work with water and how do they look when they are when water is added. Now I've said I would really like to do a video which compares that and shows that so I thought this would be a great opportunity to do that as well today. So I'm going to be doing some swatches, dry and wet and then I'm also going to be doing a couple of just pieces um, on black paper and I'm going to do one with just using the crayons straight and then another image I'm going to use water and see what comes up with and then hopefully that will show you the comparison and how I get on with them. So as you can see there some of them have been used um, obviously I've had them a year now and you can see which colours I use the most by how um, small they are. I think the smallest crayon could be this one but also this green as well so and you can see some of the colors I probably haven't even used like that blue and that blue violet so it's quite interesting actually to see after a year which colors I seem to go to all the time like these pinks I use quite a bit in this video I'm just going to be swatching onto black paper. I'm going to do a part two and in that part I will be swatching on white paper. So we'll have a good comparison between what they look like on dark paper and then what they look like on white paper. Last year I used these crayons a lot when I was working on a collaboration with Sandy Hester who is an artist based in America and I just really enjoyed using them um, for the work that I did and during that uh, collaboration I did do a swatch of the crayons and thankfully because I did that now that some of them are shorter and have lost their names it means I can refer to this chart to make sure that I've got the names of them. So it's going to be quite similar to this, but I'm going to add the water version next to it as well. And you can see then how it looks on dark paper. The paper I'm going to be using today is just a really basic acid-free Dela Rowney paper, black paper. And it's quite a light paper. It's not card. It's 150 grams. So it's just a bit thicker than your usual paper. So it's a, it's a good weight. Um, obviously there might be some buckling with it because it's not thick like my card that I used before. But I wanted to just use up some of this. And I had some of this, found some of this in a drawer. And I thought this would be perfect for using to swatch all of our colours on it. Thank you. 
Okay, so I have now swatched all of the crayons in the dry form and now I'm going to get my water and just paint water over each of the second swatches so that we can see what it looks like when it's got water added to it. I'm going to make sure I have a piece of kitchen towel so I can wipe the brush in between. Actually try not to use too much water otherwise I'll take off maybe too much of the colour. It kind of starts to look a little bit like chalk. As you can see they colour really does get quite um, washed out looking when you add the water. I'm wondering if some colours um, remain a bit um, brighter but they definitely, definitely don't become brighter with water, they are definitely muted when you add the water. red seem to be holding up. There we go, I have now swatched them side by side. You can definitely see that on the black paper at the moment the dry versions are looking a lot more um, vibrant and clear than the water soluble version of them but it is interesting to see which colours have fared better with the water on top some definitely have lost their colour or pigment completely like some of these yellows are really washed out these reds are a little bit better and I thought some of the pinks might have been okay and the greys but they're definitely not as vibrant or as bright as they would be just in their dry form. It will be interesting to see what they look like on you know in a piece of work. The next thing I'm going to do now is to draw a couple of pieces, one just using them without water and then the second piece I will use water in the piece. We might be able to see then a greater comparison between the two ways of using these water soluble crayons. So this is what I've done, I've prepared my paper by putting a washi tape border which means I'll just have a really nice clean border that I can take off after I've um, sketched and it will look really quite nice. And I'm going to be using an image which, if you know Sandy Hester, she has been doing a lot of still life painting and here's her setup that she has been working from recently. So she put this up on her Instagram account and said, feel free to paint from it. So I thought, yeah, excellent. I will paint from this image. So in the first sketch, I'm just going to draw, draw the image 
just using the crayons, I'm not going to use any water, I'm just going to draw it. And then the second sketch I do will be the, the same image, but I will add water to the crayons after I've drawn it. I think it will look really good though for us to see the two images side by side and we can see how they look different. So I'm just going straight in to do this and I'm just looking at the shapes really, getting those shapes down. Try not to muck up all my crayons, but can't avoid it sometimes. Okay. So that's the jam jar. Rather than use white, I'm using the light grey. a tree, or not a tree, we've got a plant, <laughs> a small tree over this side. Just see a little bit of the brown. I think these crayons suit quite quick mark making. Just gonna put in the banana. Nice bright yellow on one side. Actually, there are a couple of bananas, but. Got, I think that's a passion fruit, I think. You have to let me know, Sandy, if that's a passion fruit. I think it is. little satsumas or tangerines. They are actually quite orange and I uh, don't know if this orange is really bright enough. Add the red to it. I'm going to add a bit of the table around the stuff. There is a bars there. I do like that plate, but we're not really going to see a lot of it on this drawing. Maybe this side we will let's put this red crisscrosses on there. Start working on the background of the still line. Some flowers. To see if whether I can fit in the heads of them. Creative license here. Okay, almost there. I'm gonna put in a background. I'm gonna do a pink, I think. That might be a little bit bright, so I'm just going to push it back with the gray. Give 
a bit of shadows. Just gonna add now a bit of blue to the plate. I think we're there with it. So here are my two drawings ready for the next stage. Um, I'm actually a little bit nervous because I quite like them without the water and I'm like oh I don't know if I want to put the water on. What I'm going to do though is the top one I'm going to keep as is and I'm not going to touch that one with water and then the bottom one I am going to add the water to and we'll just see how it goes. Um, I haven't done this a lot on black paper. The times where I have used water with these cranes have been in my sketchbook and they've been um, in my landscape drawings and sketches and that's generally on white paper rather than on black paper. So as you can see the our swatches really do show the cranes looking very muted so that's why I'm a little bit nervous to put the water on because I think it will wash out a lot of this really nice colour um, but I've said that this is what I'm going to do and I think it will be helpful for us to see what happens so yeah I'm just going to get on with it. So I'm just going to use a very simple brush kind of quite a small, got a small brush head um, and we'll just see what happens. I'll just start up here. Obviously I don't want to just blend everything into one big smoosh um, so I'm going to try and just gently stroke the areas and try and keep the colours where they are. I was interested to see what would happen to the colours that are, I've layered on top of each colour, whether they just blend into one colour, probably. That's interesting, some of the some of the crane is definitely um, disintegrating and blending and then um, some of it isn't so it's got an interesting effect going on and I think you know depending on how much water you put on the brush will then um, affect how muted the crane will become. Okay, let's give this a go. There's quite a few different colours here, so I'm not sure. I'll just go try and go a bit careful. See that really ochery colour is coming through. Yeah, again, so some bits are definitely kind of becoming water soluble and then other bits are a bit more grainy. Let's give it a go on the plant. Try and just paint them as if I'm just painting the leaves. Tackle the banana. Kind of almost looks a bit green. <laughs> yeah, I think you just got to be careful that um, you could end up just with a very uh, muddy looking colours I think but I'm gonna keep going and see
maybe less, try and do a bit less water and might be able to keep some of the highlights. Interestingly, the red sticks around a bit more, doesn't disappear. Yeah, I think almost got all the bits. Oh, the top, that's the bit I haven't done. Almost there. Okay, so I'm going to come back in a minute once I have taken off the borders and this is dried and we can put them side by side just to see what are the big differences and which ones we prefer. Hi guys, so are you ready? Ready for the reveal? This is number one. And that's with the water soluble crayons, no water, um, just straight out of the crayon, so to speak. So you can see the textures, you can see the lines, you can see the vibrancy of the colour. And then here is number two. This is the water soluble crayon with the water added. I'll just do a close up so you can see what's going on. You can see some of the color has granulated in places and some of the colour is just really quite washed out. But it is interesting though, although I thought I wouldn't like it at all, actually, it is actually quite a nice, subtle way of, of sketching. It actually looks like a, you know, like a, a really old painting. And there, we switch the lights back on. <laughs> it's quite funny that. Mm -hmm. The dry crayon on the black really works for me, I really like it. Um, it feels like it's got a lot of life and um, I just love, you know, being able to put down the colour and get that immediate satisfaction of um, the shape. Whereas with the adding the water, it, it slows that process down. But at the same time, I, I think it's a really interesting effect on the black. And I think perhaps a combination of the two may actually work. Because there's bits on here that I actually do like, like the gradation and the way that the water has shifted some of the pigments around. It's just interesting because you get these spontaneous pools of texture, which you wouldn't normally expect. I probably just would prefer to have a little bit more lightness in the piece. Anyway guys, what do you think? Which one do you prefer? Do you have a preference? Do you use water soluble crayons? How do you use them? I'd love to hear any of your thoughts. Just put them in the comments below and I look forward to sharing part two of Lyra's water soluble crayons.